Hello and welcome. In today's video, we'll be having a look at how we can add a new model rendering to an existing report that already uses VCAT. You may want to do this for different reasons. One of the most common is that you want to have different report pages showing different models uh, that are part of a single project. For today's example, we're going to be starting out from one of our pre-made templates, which is rendering the information for the architectural model of our project. And what we want to do is we also want to load in another page that will show us the information for an MEP model as well. So you can see here we have our architectural model. And what we can start by doing is simply remove the report pages that we're not going to be needing. So simply making a little space and clearing out everything so we don't get mixed up during the work. Okay, so uh, next up, let's duplicate this page so that we have an idea of what our final report will look like. So I'm gonna duplicate this and move it over. And so what I can do is I can rename this first one and say this is assets details uh, ARC, whereas the second one is going to be Asset Details, MEP. Okay, perfect. So now we have our MEP page, but of course we're always rendering uh, the architectural model and we're showing the data for that architectural model as well. So let's have a look at how we can pull in information for a second model. And before we actually get into that, let's get a better understanding of how the template is actually loading in data coming from VCAT. So let's go over to Power Query. And here we want to have a look at the VCAT assets table. So this is the table that has the list of all our objects in our models. For today's example, we're simply going to be loading in the asset data. But of course, all the steps we do now uh, work perfectly fine if we wanted to load in the properties as well. So to understand what's going on, let's have a look at the source step, this first step for this query. And we can see that the data in VCAT assets is being loaded from another query called assets parquet. Uh, if we want to have a look at assets parquet, we can see that in this case, again, going to the source, we're getting the data from a function, which is called vcat func get file. And at, to this function, we're passing in the name of the data set that we want to be loading. So in this case, assets parquet. Now let's check out this function. We can find it up here. And if we go into the advanced editor, we can see that uh, primarily what it's doing is it's making a web call to the VCAT APIs, uh, particularly git file, and it's passing in a VCAT GUID file. Now this parameter here is what is telling the VCAT APIs which model it needs to download the data for. So let's have a look at how we can instead load data for a different model. Uh, let's go ahead and close this up. And we can see that here, the VCAT GUID file, all it is is a single string characters that represents our slot identifier. So let's go ahead and get the identifier for the second model we want to be loading. To do that, we're gonna go over to the file manager in my case, this will be the VCAT for ECC file manager, but of course the same can be done using VCAT standalone. So if we have a look at uh, the architectural uh, file, if we can find the slot ID in two ways. We can either go here in additional info, scroll down, and here we see slot ID, and we can see this is the same identifier that is in our report, or another way would be checking out templates. And here again, we can find the slot ID. And we can copy it if we need to. Now, we don't need the architectural one, we need the MEP. So again, we're gonna select the MEP file. And in this case, I'm simply gonna go down here to slot ID, click on the field, and that will be copied in my, uh, in my clipboard. Now we can go back to the report. And what I want to do is I sort of want to duplicate all the structures that are required to load in my, my VCAT asset data uh, and make a version two. So what I can do is I can actually rename this before we go forward and we'll call this VCAT GUID file one. 
Uh, this isn't required, but it'll, it'll help me then better follow along what's happening. And let's also make a new folder. I can create a, a new group is what Power BI calls them. And I'll simply call this um, MEP data. There we go. And in MEP data, I'm going to put all the queries that I need to load the assets data. So we said everything starts from this first parameter. So let's go ahead and let's duplicate this and drag it into my new group. Let's also make a little room. Okay, so now I can rename this and I'm going to rename it to VKGUID file two. Now, of course, right now it's still uh, referencing that first architectural model all I need to do is come here, replace the value, and there we go. Now, what we can do is we can sort of uh, walk back our chain of uh, transformations and rebuild that whole structure. So next up was the vcat func get file. So I'm going to quickly rename this, and this will be get file one. Then I'll go ahead and duplicate it and drag it back into my MEP folder. Then I'm going to rename it. There we go, get func2. Now, we need to make some changes to this function. So let's go ahead and check out the advanced editor again. And in here we can see it is now using the vcat GUID file one. We instead want to use the GUID file two. There we go. Okay. Next up, assets parquet. So again, I'm gonna rename it real quick. Sorry, one and then duplicate it. Drag it over. Now we rename this one as well. Okay, and if we check out the source, we can see that now this is referencing vcat func at file one. Of course, we want version two. Click out, and you can see we're already loading the new data from my MEP model. Final step is to duplicate the assets. So again, rename, this will be assets one, then duplicate, move it over and rename it again. There we go, we get assets two, step back into source. And then of course we need to change the reference to be assets parquet two. Okay, now depending on your scenarios, we could do more advanced things. We could, for example, merge everything into a single table so that we have all our assets data all in one place and then figure out in the report which one we want to be uh, using or not. But that's more an advanced scenario which we don't want to get into right now. So right now we have the assets data that we need. So I can go ahead and I can close and apply these transformations. And now the... Um, report will refresh and load that assets data uh, for my MEP model. And once I have that, um, I can actually start uh, updating my report page so that we can use it. Before though, let's have a look at the model view because I want to make sure that there aren't any incorrect relationships with my new data set. Uh, so here we have BCAT asset two and we can see Power BI tried to made a a connection with the vcat properties. However, uh, the relationship is now between uh, vcat properties and vcat assets two using the object ID. However, the object IDs in the vcat properties are referencing the first model, the architectural model. Therefore, they don't match with the object IDs that are instead in assets two. So this relationship, I actually want to go ahead and delete. And if I were interested in also using properties, I could repeat the steps I did for the assets, but for the properties table, and then map that with my assets table and sort of recreate uh, the data model, a copy of the data model for my second model. In this example though, we're just going to be using the assets table, so we don't want it to be connected to anything. So we can go now back to the report. There we go. And so, as I said, we're not going to be using properties and we can clear out some space and remove some of the things we won't be needing. Uh, these filters, for example, I could retarget, but for now, let's simply make some room. There we go. Uh, the assets I can uh, stretch out a bit. Yes. 
and same with the uh, viewer. Okay, now we can simply switch tabs and come back so the viewer has a chance to start again. And we can actually start updating uh, the, the data I'm using. So first, let's have a look at the uh, assets list here. Uh, so of course, now it's reading all its data from the VCAD asset table one. Instead, I want to use uh, the second version. So I'm going to remove the name, object type, and source file. And I'm going to add back in name, object type, and source file. OK, now we can resize everything a bit. And here we have the actual data for my MEP uh, Navisource model. Uh, now, what I want to do is, of course, I need to do the same thing also for my viewer. Uh, so right now, if I make a selection, you'll see that uh, nothing really happens to the model selection because uh, the VCAD viewer is being fed the information coming from the VCAD assets one. So first step is we want to change this up. So we're going to drag in object ID from our new table. Okay, the model will refresh. And now what you'll notice, let me go ahead and hide everything. So you'll notice that um, there actually is a selection being made. Uh, however, if I show everything again, it's still rendering the architectural model. So this selection isn't actually correct because what I'm doing is I'm feeding uh, object IDs from VCAD asset two, but mapping them on model number one, so the architectural one. Uh, what I want to do now is also tell the viewer that it needs to render a different model. So to do that, I want to go to the formatting options under model data. You'll find there's a file ID field here. I'm going to clear this out. And what I could do is I could simply paste in here my new slot ID that we just found for the MEP model. And you can see right away the model refreshes. And this is, actual, this is actually my uh, MEP model. However, Seeing as we went through the trouble of creating a parameter for it, we might as well use it. This will make it easier in the future if I want to switch it out for a different model. All I need to do is update the parameter and the viewer will also update accordingly. So instead of pasting in the value, I'm going to use the conditional formatting and I'm going to tell the viewer that it needs to go and read the VCAT GUID file too. Paste it in, this does the same thing as what we just did manually. And so now, if I go ahead and, and refresh the selections, as you can see I'm rendering the MEP model uh, and everything is hooked up correctly. Perfect. Okay, so this was a quick look at how you can add a second model inside of your report um, by simply duplicating the queries and retargeting the slot in the viewer. Um, as we said, this can also be done by merging data, and we'll be having a look at that in a future video. But for now, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for upcoming videos.